Hello and uh, welcome to GMT's uh, Gallipoli 1915 Churchill's Greatest Gamble uh, d designed by uh, Geoffrey Phipps. Uh, this is a playthrough of the Cape Hellas historical scenario. There's been uh, a little bit of delay in getting this, uh, this playthrough started. Uh, hopefully you've seen the two intros uh, that I've done. Um, it is quite a quite a heavy game, and it's taken a little bit of time to uh, uh, invest the time to uh, get up to speed with the game. Um, hopefully, I'm just about there uh, enough, I think, to uh, get on with the playthrough. And uh, yeah, a few real world things have uh, uh, come into uh, come into being, uh, so that uh, yeah, it added to the delay, um, including holidays. Uh, and indeed uh, proposals uh, which uh, uh, which were indeed uh, accepted or way proposal um, but anyway uh, enough of the real life stuff so with the game we have um, Cape Hellas here uh, so uh, this is the British landing of the 29th division um, and uh, we have the um, end of the uh, the Cape here uh, with a lot of fortifications um, we're using the historical landing scenario. The game can can support a free landing scenario where you can almost land where you like. Um, if you uh, can just about see these uh, um, these spots here, these are possible landing sites. Uh, we're sticking with the historical. Um, I think it's it's better for a solo playthrough anyway to uh, stick with the fixed um, uh, the fixed setup. And uh, yeah, we've uh, so on the board we've got Turkish units here. I've just placed some British units here. Um, that's kind of the first thing we'll end up doing. So I thought I'd just put them there. Um, and uh, if we look in a little bit more detail about what's on the board at the moment. Uh, so looking at uh, Cape Hellas in uh, detail, we have elements of the. Uh, uh, 10th and 12th companies of uh, the 26th regiment uh, Turkish regiment of the 9th division um, guarding the beaches um, we have the two main beaches here V Beach here and W Beach here uh, there is a little extra bit of W Beach possible here and um, there is if I slightly zoom back a little bit uh, you'll see there's uh, also a, a small beach here which is V Camber which can be used for V Beach as well. Um, up here we have X Beach, uh, which will come into play. Um, <clears throat> as far as fortifications goes, uh, we have um, a lot of uh, trench trench lines here, and uh, we have a fort here, uh, a fort here, and a fort here. So effectively, it's a it's an all it's a 360 degree trench line uh, such as it is the main V beach here um, has a trench line with barbed wire and uh, there's another fort underneath there so there's a lot of fortifications but actually not a lot of troops um, these troops are what's known as pickets um, they are a quarter of a company effectively a platoon uh, so they're a quarter step uh, so very little but um, yeah they were uh, they're very very well dug in um, behind uh, we have, no, that's just shifted a bit there, um, again pickets here, we have two what look like coastal artillery units, but they're not, they're what's known as Nordfelt uh, guns, which are effectively like a slight, slightly later version of the Gatling gun, um, so they're actually just like a machine gun um, unit, um, uh, even though they're a, they're a fixed coastal defence on these two beaches. Um, behind here we have, um, with uh, these two companies, um, we have a uh, a pom 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 gun, which again is um, kind of like part of the coastal artillery, but this is mobile, and um, uh, it, it's it's effectively a normal artillery unit, uh, even though it was part of the coastal defences. Um, so. Uh, the interesting thing is, on the first turn, uh, which is the 4am to 6am turn, um, it's actually 
uh, up in the Anzac Cove area, so the different scenario where all the landings take place in total. Um, the only thing that happens here is, um, again, if I zoom out and uh, just adjust, up here at uh, what's known as Y Beach, we have two companies and a machine gun unit um, of, uh, I think it's the King's Own Scottish Borderers, yep, uh, landing uh, at this beach here. Uh, that's the only thing that happens uh, in what's known as the first wave, or actually the entire, uh, well, in the first wave. The second wave is more troops come ashore at that beach as well, but nothing actually happens on the others. In fact, something ha does happen. Uh, there's actually bombardment um, happening from the ships. Um, however, the bombardment results are fixed for the historical landing. Um, certainly for the, for the, for the pre-landing bombardment, they're kind of fixed. And uh, actually, for most of it, it's completely ineffective. Uh, the only effect you will get is on um, X Beach, uh, which is up here where there is a confusion uh, marker put on the defenders uh, uh, which uh, uh, yeah, it reduces their morale um, and their movement uh, not like they're going to move uh, and that's it so out of the huge amount of shells lobbed um, for the pre-bombardment that's the only result you get but however the boats are waiting offshore for this bombardment to finish so they don't land until next turn now we went through the turn sequence in uh, in the intros. Uh, the amphibious assaults actually add a little bit. They add a kind of phase right in the middle, uh, and what it really does is it actually adds two extra activation impulses. Uh, what's known as a first wave and a second wave, where the units land while well, they're placed next to the beach, um, as you can see, the Y beach units are. Then they're subject to coastal defence fire, uh, and the coastal defence fire is kind of mechanical. Um, what is each step you roll, and if there's more than more than three coastal defence factors, there's a ten percent chance of it taking a loss. Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, it's five percent if there are less than three, and you just roll for each step. So there's no, it, it, it's 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 not particularly detailed on that. Um, but then they get to move in. Uh, and then uh, hopefully do an assault. Um, the British units are on initial uh, assault orders. Um, I've got the the system set up to be able to draw the orders. However, to be honest, the orders are uh, they're unlikely to be fulfilled initially anyway, uh, due to the heaviness of the defences. Um, and we've got a sheet here, uh, which I'll just show you. Um, which describes the orders and I think we'll just stick to that so there's an idea that Y Beach and X Beach um, kind of converge to attempt to converge together X Beach and W Beach again try and converge and on V Beach uh, there's an attempt to take the forts or certainly the forts on the shoreline uh, and on S Beach which is over here uh, there's just a landing and uh, it they're meant to kind of sit there. So that's the intention. Um, the three lines, um, you can see there's another one up here, are the, um, are the objective lines um, for, I, I believe, the brigade which comes on, which is the 88th Brigade. So uh, essentially the, the, the initial units come on, they're meant to just take the beaches and then not do very much and then uh, the idea is uh, 88th Brigade, which uh, is the blue here, um, let me get it into focus, uh, which will land at V Beach, <coughs> uh, will have these objectives, and uh, you uh, won't be surprised, it's, uh, it's not a likely occurrence. Anyway, so um, that's the orders uh, on the British side. Uh, on the Turkish side, there is a cordon defence um, in uh, order in place. Uh, just get the focus back here for you. Um, uh, which means they can defend in position. You can have pickets, which is what we've got here. So you can you can break up your units. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you 
um, uh, you know, you, you, you have that defence in place, uh, but spread out. Also here you'll see these white units um, here, and if I swing around a little bit further here, um, these are coastal defence artillery units, and they are in gun pits, which means uh, they point in a certain direction. Now, for the early part of the landings, they're actually firing at the ships, so they don't get involved on the land, but then they can be what's known as released, uh, and then be able to um, fire on the uh, uh, on the beaches and on the on the uh, on the attackers, invaders, etc. Um, the gun pits are pointing um, these three, which is one battery split up into um, a, a gun per hex, if you like, uh, are pointing this way, and so they will be able to interdict certainly round C and S beaches. Um, these here are actually pointing this way out to sea. Uh, and because they're in a gun pit, they're, uh, they're protected. Uh, if we wanted to swing them around, um, we, would, uh, we would be able to, but um, they'd actually be on top of their fort, so they'd effectively be outside the gun pit, so they'd have been wheeled out of their defensive arrangement. So there's, there's risk in that, because um, there is actually naval gunfire in, in the game, uh, in addition to this pre-bombardment, which doesn't really do anything, and counter-battery uh, is part of it, uh, but I'll go through it as we go through it, I think. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and if I uh, uh, just uh, swing round, you see we've got these uh, the boxes ready for the hexes uh, when it all gets a bit congested, particularly on V-Beach. Uh, and we have a little box here, which is known as SS River Clyde, and it says 6 MGs. So uh, if anybody knows the history, the SS River Clyde was um, a, a steamer which was uh, effectively run aground on the beach uh, with troops inside who then attempted to um, come through holes in the side of the hull and then down some gang gangways down to, to the beach. Um, it was a spectacularly unsuccessful uh, idea um, because all the defenders just trained their guns on the gangplanks and uh, uh, it was a, effectively something like a shooting gallery and uh, nobody actually get off, got onto the beach uh, and they stopped the uh, uh, the units coming off River Clyde uh, very quickly and they just sat there and waited for the rest of the troops which were landed normally to take the beach so they could disembark. Um, we have this in the game and um, we will use the River Clyde. There is a uh, I, th I think uh, uh, two battalions I think um, sitting on the River Clyde and uh, they will be in this box uh, but it'll actually be in V Beach uh, where they are. The six MGs are uh, some MGs which were installed on the hull um, which uh, which are able to provide support and that's actually uh, one of the good things about the River Clyde there uh, and there's not much more that is good but anyway that's uh, that's available um, as part of this scenario. The last bit of setup I want to uh, go through with you is um, this, which is known as the landing sled. This is sheet number two. Sheet number one is for the Anzac uh, area. Um, and this this is effectively a, a roster for the units coming in on the beaches. So we have the beaches here, uh, X, the V beaches, including River Clyde, W, S and Y, and then turn one here, and then turn two, and then split it into wave one and wave two, which is the two little um, activation phases uh, added to the turn for these uh, these two turns. Um, so this is four to six a.m. and this is the six a.m. turn. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just play uh, placed here and then used in in the game. Uh, just above here, uh, you would have seen it before is. Um, sorry about the reflection there, but uh, uh, is the orders schedule, so the British one up here and the Turkish one down here. Um, I've actually, uh, again, I'm using the uh, orders tableau for both uh, on the Turkish display. They're not any different. Uh, they all represent exactly the same thing. Um, and so uh, all the HQs for the British are here, uh, and uh, there is a Brigade HQ in general reserve um, I've got from 
the uh, uh, the planning map and um, the Turkish uh, defenders are on the cordon defence. Um, you'll see there's a lot of HQs here. Um, so normally it's a bridgement uh, of which uh, 29th Division would have three of them. Um, we've got five here. Uh, the reason is is that temporarily there is an HQ per beach um, and they're treated as what's known as flying columns. Flying columns are ad hoc uh, bridgements which are created during the game. These are created specially for this purpose of the initial landing. And uh, so there's one for Y, one for X, one for uh, V, one for W. And uh, uh, there is actually a set of um, markers missing in the in the actual game for S Beach. So we use the normal flying column markers for that, which is known as flying column alpha. And uh, the HQs for these beaches are actually on the display here. They won't come in initially. They'll be on turn two, of course. Um, v, W, um, S for that one, and X up here. So uh, they're available. The normal HQs do come in, as you can see. 88, uh, 86 Brigade comes in here, uh, and turn three, the others, 87th and 88th Brigade, uh, come in, and they will then take over um, when they were all in. They'll, they'll absorb effectively um, the uh, the units they're, they're meant to in their particular brigades. Um, with with a proviso of course that the brigades <laughs> the, the, these uh, these beaches link up if they don't then the you know if uh, the the beach hq will have to have to stay there so that's the setup we've got here and um let's uh let's see how we get on with the first turn very small turn um we have only the wave on y beach okay so here we are on uh, y beach uh, which is any beach uh, that's landed on in turn one and uh, this is wave one and two companies of the first king's own scottish borderers uh, with their mg unit are going to land here so the sequence is uh, a rowing sub segment uh, which is placing the unit uh, which we've done uh, then we have a naval fire subsegment. So this is fire from coastal defence um, at the units, and also uh, machine gun fire from the boats that's actually uh, taking them in. So the rowboats are being towed by a, a little uh, what's known as a pinnace, um, which uh, has machine guns on, and uh, uh, and that fire happens as well. Um, there is no defenders here, there is no artillery fire, the coastal defence uh, units are pointing the wrong way and uh, so uh, there isn't any opposition on the beach. Uh, we then have uh, what's known as the contested beach subsegment, um, and this is about uh, sacrificing officer points to actually land, uh, as in the officers kind of lead the troops on onto the shore and, uh, and and will suffer as a consequence. Again, there is no no fire, so it's not a contested beach. Um, there's nothing that has a uh, um, line of sight uh, onto the beach, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, there is a ridge here, so I think this picket up here um, is not going to be able to see. Also, this is much lower ground as well, um, so this is higher, and so therefore it's in a bit of a, a bit of a dip, um, actually, from where it is. Uh, there is uh, ridge lines from here, even though this is higher. I don't believe it will be able to see uh, see here uh, at at all, uh, as far as I can see. So, um, so the landing comes in. Uh, so uh, once that um, first wave what's known as the naval segment, which is the rowing, the fire, and the contested beach. Then we have the act, act, amphibious activation segment for that first wave. Um, so you uh, activate landing uh, bridgements, which are landing. There is, is only one here, which is the Y Beach uh, bridgement, temporary bridgement um, flying column. And we have uh, a movement step and then an assault step. Okay, so in the uh, movement step uh, subsegment 
for the first wave. Um, uh, it'll cost uh, plus one uh, to land, uh, one for the folded scrub, and I think there must be a contour change here um, to come up from all C. Uh, so it's three into there. Um, I've just realised that uh, it's actually dawn at the moment, so it is uh, twilight, so um, adjacent is the uh, uh, spotting distance, so uh, there, there's no problem about uh, fire uh, at the moment anyway. And uh, I think uh, we'll leave that guy there and bring this guy on for three, and then move up here, uh, which uh, with a ridge is plus one, so that's um, three to there, four, five, and we'll put the machine gun here to move the same distance as well. Uh, we keep in messaging range with the beach, and um, yeah, the HQ is coming in the next wave, uh, and uh, we've got a sweep round here on the um, on the uh, uh, orders uh, to come down this ravine here uh, towards X Beach. So uh, that's what we're doing, and then uh, you know I'm sure it'll be much more useful to try and get across here and cut some line of supply here, but uh, that's not what's going to happen. So um, after that we have the assault step, of which there isn't one, uh, there's nothing to assault. So we actually move on to the second wave, naval segment. So another rowing sub-segment um, to put in the next set of troops coming in. And again, we're really only talking about White Beach at the moment. Um, so here are the units. Um, placed here. And uh, uh, yeah, there is no um, naval fire uh, for that again. Uh, there's no um, uh, uh, pinnace machine gun fire either. It's not, it's not contested as a beach. And uh, we go through uh, the same again, which is we um, uh, do a movement step and an, an assault step. Now, in this movement, only the second wave units, so these um, first wave units, uh, let me just read on tap so you get a slightly bigger picture here. Um, only the, uh, these these units don't move because they, they landed and moved in the first wave. Uh, so let's do that, um, and uh, we'll move the HQ on anyway and uh, we'll see how far we can get these guys so that's three to there um, four and then uh, into the ravine now I don't think the ravine um, oh, there is a ravine hex side cost uh, and actually that's quite steep that's actually plus three so three four um, can't actually get down into the ravine there um, so we will, I think, uh, move through and stack again here. So, uh, yeah, we haven't quite got the movement with our standard six movement to get off the boat and then into the ravine. Um, right, uh, and then there's an assault step, which uh, there isn't one again. And uh, after that, we switch to the standard activations phase. So in that activation segment, um, we don't have any British to activate uh, because the uh, that bridgement just landed and it didn't have any troops on uh, before the landing uh, in the amphibious assault phase. Uh, so it's just the Turks. Now the Turks are on cordon defence and cordon defence means that you spread out your units uh, as we've got here. Um, let's zoom out. And um, in you uh, you need to um, deploy pickets, and uh, uh, with these pickets, you define a um, a rally point, which is where the pickets who are going to try and hold their hex can uh, retreat to. Uh, they can either be in their hex or they can move to the rally point. Um, 
And I've got uh, two rally points here I've marked. Uh, and uh, they are uh, for the blue units, which are these pickets here, which represent uh, the 6th sixth, sixth Battalion, uh, sorry, 6th Company of the 2nd Battalion, uh, these here and the one under here. Um, them, their rally point is here. And for the purples, which are the, um, uh, the pickets of the uh third uh third company are uh, to retreat to this point here i've got a little purple dot um just here um by the units here now the units here and here um there's two two battalions there i've put in support so those units um will uh can attempt to be committed to one of the objective hectares which is where the pickets are um, to then uh, intervene, uh, but it's not autom it's not automatic um, at the moment. I don't think we'd want to commit them anyway, because um, uh, I don't think. Uh, well, we know that that beach isn't isn't really much of a threat, um, and uh, the main uh, the main focus is down on this end. So, as an activation sub segment, um, there's not really that very much to do at all. So. Um, it really is quite a short turn that first turn. Um, after the activations, we have an end of turn phase uh, in which uh, we just really uh, advance the turn marker. So we'll do that. So we're on turn two now. Right, for turn two, uh, this is where the fur really starts flying. Um, I've moved the camera position across. Um, we start with pretty much the full turn, which uh, we have a reinforcements phase. Um, there is an amphibious reinforcement segment, so once a beach is taken, uh, then uh, reinforcements to that beach uh, can be landed during the reinforcements phase. So we can do that with uh, uh, Y Beach, which uh, is uh, just in view there. So I will place the reinforcements there and uh, go through that. Um, we now have uh, daylight because we're at the 6 a.m. turn. Uh, but again, I don't think that anything particularly could fire up Y Beach. Um, so I think they get off scot-free. Um, but anyway, let me sort out the um, uh, amphibious reinforcements. So in the amphibious reinforcement segment, all you do is actually you just place the units on uh, the beach. Uh, now these are the units here. Uh, it's the last uh, company of the I think SWB, I think it's the South Wales Borderers, uh, and, or actually the first one. <laughs> Uh, the rest of them are actually landing at S Beach, uh, which is way over here, interestingly enough. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a strange place for them to be, really. Uh, yeah, uh, the, rest, uh, the rest are uh, landing this turn at S Beach here. Um, uh, but anyway, with them is uh, actually two half battalions which are the normal units here and these are this is the plymouth battalion of uh, the royal naval division as part of uh, uh, the royal marine brigade um so these are royal marines landing uh yeah the um the main difference you'll see is they are slightly lighter on their morale value because uh, they were like much lighter armed um, didn't have any heavy weapons, etc. So, but they, they've all come back. Uh, come on, just over there. So now that reinforcement segment is over, then we're back to um, the traditional sequence of play again, and that's uh, the supply phase. Uh, so supply, we don't need to check um, really until the 8 p.m. turn. So we can actually ignore that. Uh, to the command phase, um, we have one HQ on the board for 
the uh, the British, which is the YBHHQ. Um, I'm not sure I want to change the orders as yet. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, and uh, yeah, for the Turks, I think the cordon defence is exactly what they need at the moment. So uh, command phase will um, continue on that. Uh, there are no isolated units with the co uh, the um, cordon defence. Uh, once the pickets are in place, the pickets are in place. If you, if you see what I mean, and uh, so yeah, uh, the all of the um, places where the Turks are at the moment uh, will have uh, telephones. So there's uh, there's actually communications. So there's messaging range um, from uh, from the units back to back to the HQ as well uh, yeah so uh, uh, we're looking to adjust the office points um, I think X, uh, Y Beach and uh, the 26th regiment for the Turks is actually at the maximum so there's uh, there's no need to adjust those um, uh, yes let me just check on that Actually, um, I stand corrected here. Um, the Y Beach uh, officer point marker, if we have a quick look at it, um, so uh, the first column here is for attack um, day and night, officer point changes, then it's uh, defense and then regroup. So, actually, during the day um, on an attack order. Uh, it's automatic that a, an officer point is lost, so uh, their officer points drop um, each turn. That, that means that um, the officer points for White Beach drop from 6 to 5, um, just um, by just having the attack, the attack order happening. Um, Right, so well, this is uh, I think the thing with flying columns. I think they're not as efficient as the standard uh, regiment or brigade or, or regiment organisations. So um, that's the officer point adjustment. Orders continuation. So uh, uh, we'll need to check that as well. Uh, so yeah, so the continuation. Um, is automatic for the Turks uh, at uh, full level on uh, the Y Beach HQ. It has a continu um, continuation value of 80, and um, I think uh, don't think we have anything else uh, that uh, is um, affected on that. So we just have a roll of 80. So. Um, with the roll of 80, uh, I'm going to use um, these dice with the reds being the tens. Um, and uh, I believe the, uh, the zero counts as, uh, is a zero. So um, yeah, we want uh, 80 or uh, less to continue. Uh, we actually got a 93. Um, which uh, is not good news um, with a failure of the orders um, that's uh, the initial tag um, I believe has failed the failure, the failure of initial uh, attack order means that uh, the White Beach HQ and its attack uh, moves from the order of initial attack to the order of stalled attack the upshot of this is that, um, uh, firstly, they're not required to make progress, as in take some territory. However, they have half movement allowance. The other thing is, is that stalled attack uh, only lasts for one turn. At the end of the turn of stalled attack, the next turn, uh, it will de the order will degrade again to disorganised defence, which is uh, effectively the equivalent of no orders in this game. Uh, so they will. Uh, 
uh, they will be a bit stuck. Um, so anyway, for this turn it is now a stalled attack uh, and I've moved the marker uh, accordingly. Uh, as I said before, the Turks don't have to roll for their continuation. Their uh, officer points are high enough not to have to roll. Um, let's see how long that continues. Right, uh, for the next part of the turn we flip to the amphibious assault uh, phase which is that little turn with the two waves. So as part of that we'll have to um, get out all the troops that are going to land at uh, uh, v, um, v, W, X and S beach uh, and uh, get those uh, onto uh, the map. Okay, so we've completed that. Uh, we've got the first two companies landing at V Beach. Um, don't envy them at all. Uh, we have the four companies landed at W Beach. We could use WN, which is there, uh, but the capacity of W Beach is four, so we could stick them all together. I think that's probably the best idea. Uh, there's less, you know, more chance of uh, some of them surviving. Uh, S Beach doesn't actually get anything this turn. Uh, we've placed Y. And then here at X Beach, we have uh, two companies again landing here. Um, so that's the uh, first wave rowing subsegment. There will be other troops are coming at wave two, uh, including uh, that's the point where the River Clyde will land as well, uh, and we'll be placing those troops. But uh, we have uh, have to deal with the first wave first. All right, starting from V Beach here, uh, we have each unit will need to be rolled for, and uh, you count the number of uh, coastal defence um, points which uh, are uh, uh, are able to get to that beach. Now this will be the three units. I'll just show you um, up here, which are within the arc of beach um, so they will fire and they are one point oh no there's a there's a two and two ones uh, so that's four points to get there now that means that there's a 10% chance of each unit taking a hit so we roll our um, our dice again here um, there's no morale check uh, or anything done with this this is just a plain hit because if something's hit then uh, then there is a um, it's taken off the board and that's it it's not quite the normal fire phase this is a rather simplified version so um, if we look for um, X company first of the uh, first RDF these would be the Royal Dublin Fusiliers uh, and so the first unit we're, uh, we're looking at anything greater uh, than a 10 we have an 89 which is fine and the unit underneath which I think might be Y. No, it's W. W Company uh, of the W Fusiliers. We have a 56, so they're not hit by the uh, by the coastal defence. Now, um, with the uh, other uh, two beaches, uh, those coastal defence uh, units cannot reach them, so. There is no more CD fire. Um, all there is is just fire from the local units. So um, we can get on with that. Uh, next, I believe. Uh, well, actually, what we next do is the contested beach sub segment. So we actually remove officer points from those beaches um, for the beaches being contested. Uh, just checking the charts there. Uh, as it's a day turn, there is actually no officer point cost. I think um, it's more about people getting lost than actually getting shot uh, for that. Uh, so there's uh, nothing in that sub-segment to do. Uh, and then we're on to the first wave, amphibious activations. So we decide on uh, which beach we want to go first. And... Underneath that, we provide movement and then assault. Um, yeah, and we'll get opportunity fires. So this is where 
uh, uh, a lot of the shot and shell will start happening. So what I've done now is I've uh, put the V Beach stacking marker on V Beach and then moved the Turkish and um, the British units uh, to the V Beach Square, um, the box, and uh, we'll use that to illustrate what's going on because if we if we don't it'll be a little bit uh, cramped. So here we have the, the Royal Dublin Fusiliers X and W Company and then we've got the picket with the Nordfelt Gatling gun uh, which is behind barbed wire in a fire trench. Now I did forget a step to do actually which was um, to actually do the MG fire from the uh, pinnace steamers that uh, have uh, towed the boats in. So there is uh, 0.5 machine gun points per unit that is brought in. So that's one MG, which does get to the fire first at these units. So we'll do that. Um, that's part of the naval fire sub-segment, which is when we fired the um, coastal defense fire from the big guns. So I'll do that now. Now I'm not sure if I've taken you through how we're going to work with the dice. Uh, we're using uh, five dice here um, using a single roll which is uh, how it's advised to do. So we have um, the green dice uh, which counts for the actual fire roll. We then have as we've seen already the red and the white dice for the um, morale roll, um, well sorry, for the fire um, results table uh, uh, percentage to see if uh, if a, uh, a less than single point of uh, fire result actually occurs. And then we have the black and the grey dice, which actually is the morale roll uh, as, as required. So we'll roll those five dice uh, when we do, and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what goes on. So the first thing you need to do is the machine gun fire onto the beach from the ships, uh, which uh, we will now roll. And uh, looking at the fire table, we have one MG point. Uh, one MG point is firing onto uh, units in a fire trench. So looking at our fire mods, if we uh, uh, look at what uh, was going on there, uh, the only one I think which is really relevant is uh, they are in a field work, oops, uh, field work there, fire trench or fort, they're not hiding and it would be a plus four from infantry. So there is a plus four for the dice uh, I don't think there's anything more to add. So we'll roll the dice with plus four on the green dice uh, on the one column of the fire results table. Uh, we get a three, which is a reasonable roll. Uh, now a three on the one column. Uh, that gives us, just getting the chart across, um, let's look at that. Um, we have, uh, yeah, on the one column here, uh, and we have a three plus four is a seven. We get a 0 0.05 result. This means that the green dice didn't hit. Uh, we haven't quite got the focus there, sorry. So um, the one column, three up to seven, 0 0.05. Uh, and that also, uh, so that means the green dice didn't hit, as I said. And we look at the percentile dice, the red and the yellow, as the red and the white. We got a 64, so that's not um, uh, equal to less than 0 0.5. There is another thing you do check with the, those dice is that if the roll is within 40 
of a result. You don't get a step loss, but you do get a forced morale check. Um, as it is, it's not within 40. Um, that would be from 45 downwards, and we've got a 64. So the machine gun fire does absolutely nothing for us. Okay, so the movement of the um, uh, the two companies here into the hex is a move to assault, and um, uh, movement will attract opportunity fire. So um, these units will be fired as a group as they moved on and uh, it will be units within range and we have of course the units in the hex uh, plus all the units around here and we count steps um, but the units at what's known as zero range i.e actually in the hex are doubled um, and so <clears throat> looking at uh, these units uh, that's a quarter plus one uh, for the MG factor there, so it's one and a quarter uh, double, uh, so uh, two and a half, and then we have quarters here, so that's two and a half, three and a quarter, so that rounds down to three on the fire uh, results table, there's a 3.5 but there's no three and a quarter, and uh, uh, so looking at that table we then see well, what are we going to do about the uh, modifiers, so um, first up, uh, we have a density die roll modifier. Now, when you're landing as part of an amphibious assault, um, your steps are doubled. Um, and here we have the charts here. And as you can see, just here, the density die roll modifier. Um, there's two steps, uh, the two companies, uh, but it's doubled to four. So uh, if the firing unit is infantry, which it is, uh, it's infantry fire or artillery fire, uh, it's a minus two. So we start off with a minus two as uh, the um, uh, the modifier. Uh, we're then uh, firing on uh, a moving unit using opportunity fire. And uh, just uh, looking at the, uh, the chart here, we can focus. A little bit awkward for the uh, for it to focus on this. Yeah, it's just coming about now. So moving opportunity fire. Uh, so for the target, for simply spending MPs, it's a minus three for infantry fire. However, there's another part to it, which is per uh, movement point portion. Now this is for movement points to move across hex sites. So not hex terrain, but hexide terrain. Uh, now we have barbed wire in that hex, uh, and that is counts as a hexide terrain. So for each movement point, you get another minus three. Uh, barbed wire is actually a, a plus one um, modifier for movement. Uh, so that gives us uh, minus six uh, with those two movement modifiers, minus eight with uh, the uh, density die roll modifier. Now if you didn't think that was enough, um, right down at the bottom uh, we have another modifier here which is known as no man's land. So the target is moving in no man's land in front of a fire trench or fort. Now no man's land is the area in the hex in front of a fire trench or fort. So if, you've, if, if you like the terrain has been cleared. And uh, that's actually another minus three. So we have a total of, uh, let's count it, minus 11 as the modifier on the uh, fire results table uh, for three. So we roll our usual five dice um, in great trepidation for the double infusal ears here. Um, and uh, let's see what comes out. Well, it's a reasonable roll. Um, it's a six. Um, let me just uh, get the camera back to somewhere useful for you to see. There we go. Uh, we've got a 6. Uh, 6 minus 11. 
I think comes out at minus five. And uh, if we look on the fire results table at minus five for a fire factor of three, uh, we get a 0 0.77. Uh, so that means that uh, if the percentage rolls, the red and the white, is uh, lower than 77, then it's a hit. Um, the actual percentage roll is actually 38. Um, there's the original six. So there is a hit. So one of those uh, units uh, will, be, uh, will be lost uh, and goes to uh, what's... Uh, it's, uh, nicely known as the dead pile so I'll move it off here for the moment uh, I'm not sure where I put my dead pile um, a little box but uh, we'll move it off the chart so we are left with the uh, the other unit there uh, and that will be subject to a morale check uh, and the, it has a, a morale level of 78 and the morale check is 38 which means it does pass the morale check so it does manage to get into the hex uh, for the assault now normally at this point there would be um, a uh, morale check uh, actually as it moved into the before it moved into the hex you do a morale check for uh, rolling for assault um, but for an initial attack and a landing you don't do that it's automatically an assault so we will place an assault marker onto that unit. Okay, uh, and that's V Beach done for the moment um, with the moving segment. Uh, we need to then move on to the other beaches. And uh, the next one would be W Beach. And apologies if this is uh, taking a little long. Um, I'm just judging how long this actually takes to see uh, what editing I need to do for future turns and it is rather a special turn here so um, and I think it's worth you know, focusing um, as a, you know, a, a learning thing so uh, the units here um, not subject to uh, the, uh, the, the um, coastal defense fire um, there is a uh, uh, MG Pinace Fire, um, which uh, again should have been done, but I'll do it now. Uh, so for each uh, each step, um, there is uh, half a MG point, so that's 1.5 because the machine gun isn't actually a step; uh, it's, it's, it's effectively zero steps because uh, it's so small. Uh, so that's a 1.5 fire, and uh, it'll be into the hex that's landing. Uh, which is uh, W, which W comes in here. So uh, with the W, we have a similar, uh, and I don't know if you can just see it, uh, I'll try and zoom in for you. Uh, you can just see that there is a trench line on the back end of the hex side, uh, and then a, some barbed wire in front of it. So it is in exactly the same uh, state as V Beach. Uh, so uh, 1.5 fire uh, and of course it's plus 3 because of uh, the trench so let's see how that goes uh, we have a 4 on 1.5 um, a 4 on 1.5 comes out as uh, 0 0.11 um, Oh, sorry. It's uh, it's a four, and it's actually plus uh, plus three, isn't it? So it's actually a seven. Seven comes out as a point zero seven. So we would need um, a forty-seven at least to have some effect, and uh, we don't. We've got a sixty-nine on the uh, uh, on the percentage. So uh, the the fire from the ships didn't do anything, uh, and now we uh, move into the hex. So it costs uh, one to move in, one to cross the uh, barbed wire, and then again, I think we'll replace the units into the W box and use the marker there to keep things a bit clear. 
Um, let me zoom out so you can see that box now. There we go, and we also need the fortification. And here we go. So there's not quite as much defence here. There's none of the uh, the Norden Gatling guns here. Just just the picket. Um, so for the movement, um, there is some opportunity fire. Uh, zooming out, we see uh, there's. Uh, these two hexes with uh, units being able to contribute and again the unit um, in the hex is doubled so that's a half a step and two quarters is a fire factor of one so we uh, we will fire on the one table and um, pretty much we'll have the same modifiers as we did before in fact they will be slightly worse because um, we've got four steps landing and four steps on the density dial modifier. Um, well, that actually goes off the chart, which stops at five. Uh, and five is a minus three. And for each step beyond that, you just add another one. So um, as we've got four steps, and remember they're doubled because they're landing, so that's eight. So uh, that's minus three plus another one. So that's minus six. If we add that to our three movement uh, modifiers, the moving minus three, the barbed wire, um, uh, MP minus three, and the no man's land. So to our minus nine, uh, nine we add a, uh, a minus six. So minus 15. Um, that sounds horrendous. Uh, so let's roll the dice and see what happens. Got a six again, um, six. Now this of course is only on the one chart, so it's not quite as lethal. Uh, the actual result is uh, six and uh, minus 15. Um, puts us onto a minus nine, which is off the chart. So uh, we're, we stick with the minus seven. Uh, which is the worst uh, result, or the uh, deadliest result, and that's on a one is a 0.34. Uh, now we've got a 44 as our percentage, so therefore there isn't a loss, would you believe? There uh, just isn't enough volume of fire coming down. Um, however, there does need to be a morale check, and the morale check is against. Um, the strongest or the highest morale unit which is the 80 there um, and uh, that's actually the machine gun unit uh, we actually rolled an 86 so it is actually greater than morale so uh, there's nothing special about that role other than the failure we're not in the 90s where we consider route which uh, a failure with route will actually remove the entire stack uh, we just get a failure which results in a confused state. And so we'll place that on those units. And that's the result of the fire uh, in, in that hex. Now we can move on to uh, the last beach we need to consider, which is, uh, is it X Beach, I think it's called? Yeah, X Beach. I'll uh, just have to pause there actually and just pop back to W Beach because um, when you go off the chart on the fire results table you actually climb a column. Um, so we had a minus nine result and we only have minus seven. So we actually climbed two results, uh, two columns up from uh, one fire power factor to so 1.5. That result is actually a 0 0.51 uh, which the 44 is less than so there is actually a step loss um, in this hex so we will remove um, remove that uh, actually I've just realized I've made another mistake um, this of course is a machine gun so that's zero steps there was only three steps landing 
uh, which means it's only a minus 4 uh, rather than a minus 6 for target density and that means it was a 7 minus 7 which is the right result so we actually did do it correctly um, inadvertently I made a double mistake which kind of cancelled each other out but we are right um, it was on the minus 7 result on the one column and uh, the uh, the results changed so <laughs> apologies for that little um, detour but uh, uh, back we are to uh, X, X beach here so we have uh, again a, a if I can just get our little box sorted here um, it's being stubborn there we go and we can build uh, we can then uh, do our uh, mg5 from the ships um, remember the actual result one of the just about the only re useful result from the sh ship bombardment in uh, the uh, 4 a.m turn was uh, was to confuse this stack so uh, they're already confused that's that's great um, but we have the mg5 we have two Two steps so that's one factor of mg5 um, on here we again have we have actually a shallow trench um, you can see that zigzag rather than the battlement kind of uh, uh, symbol there um, there also isn't any barbed wire so uh, this may be an easier uh, an easier assault here but shallow trench um, will give us uh, let me check the modifier on that a shallow trench uh, is uh, a plus three. Well, five trench is a plus four, so I had actually went to the wrong. Uh, I actually went to the uh, wrong column, but it didn't matter. It, there hasn't been any casualties caused on the Turkey site yet. So, uh, but this is actually a plus three. Uh, so let's roll on the one column at plus three for the uh, ship fire. Uh, we ordered nine, so it's very, very unlikely. Uh, we're on a point zero four, and uh, yeah, we're uh, we're not even within uh, within the point four range, the forty range. Uh, it's a forty seven, so that just exceeds that. So there is no effect. Uh, so in the movement step, we move into the hex, and again, I'll I'll do the uh, same trick as the other hexes. Um, Again, we'll need a fortification there. So with the move to assault, there's opportunity fire again. Um, we only have the defenders in the hex, which are doubled, of course. Uh, they have one uh, machine gun factor from the Nordfelt Gatlin guns and uh, a quarter from the picket. So it's one, of course, doubled, two and a half. Um, we uh, then apply the modifiers. Uh, we don't get the barbed wire um, minus three. We'll get the minus three for movement. Uh, we will get the density. Well, as there's two steps coming in, double to four. That's a minus two. So that's minus five. And then the no man's land. Uh, that only applies with a fire trench, I believe. Um, uh, fire trench or fort. So that doesn't apply either. So we have a minus five. Um, as uh, the opportunity fire modifier and that's on the two and a half column a six rolling a lot of sixes so minus five means it's a one and a one result is uh, a zero point uh, one seven for a one uh, zero point one seven and uh, we actually have a 13 as the roll so it does cause a casualty and uh, so the one unit is removed and we look at the morale check for the other unit and we have a 35 which is fine so uh, uh, but we need to apply uh, assault markers to uh, those hexes as well so I'll just do that
So I placed the assault marker there and I put one on W Beach as well. Um, so uh, just interesting point again, um, just over in W Beach the attackers are actually confused. Now normally with a uh, move to assault, if uh, uh, well normally in a movement if uh, there is a, a confused result, if there's a failure of a morale check then the movement is stopped. Um, with uh, assaults um, a confused result um, means that the assault actually still happens but is at half strength. Uh, so just uh, for that, that information. Um, actually just thinking it now, the uh, Turkish units did have uh, a, uh, a confused marker on them so they were half strength. So instead of two and a half uh, it would have been uh, one and a quarter as the result. Um, now where were we with that? It was uh, on the one result, which would have resulted in a 0.14, which still would have been uh, a casualty. So we still got that right again. So I'm making a few mistakes here, but uh, they seem to be um, seem to be evening themselves out, um, so that uh, the original results are correct. So that's the um, move to assault. And now there's an assault phase on this uh, uh, first wave of turn two, uh, amphibious assault phase. So uh, we'll have to, uh, let's uh, crack on with those. So for the assault step, if we uh, head back to uh, the beach, where we have the remaining company of the Royal Dublin Fusiliers uh, attacking. So uh, with the assault, um, we just use raw steps and we just use uh, terrain modifiers uh, for both sides um, as modifiers for the assault results table. So uh, as you can see here we have uh, a quarter of a step here and one step coming in. Uh, so normally we would look, or we do look, on the assault results table. Um, let me bring it in front of you. Hopefully, oops, I got big there. And so this column here is a quarter of a defender step and this row here is the one attacker step. Uh, we then take the modifiers into account. So the modifier um, for the terrain, it's the same as the, uh, the, the, the fire, um, that would be uh, plus uh, four for the uh, defender and plus one for the attacker. The one is actually coming from the the scrub that's actually in the hex. So the attacker's outside of the trench and just gets the scrub. Um, so what we do is we move columns and rows uh, to affect that. Uh, so with a plus one um, we would actually move up from the defender 0.25 up and we can't do that so what we do is we add it to the attacker so the attacker goes from 1 to 1.25 then we have a plus 4 back the other way which is a column shift so we go back uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 so it is actually a 0.25 versus 0.25 attack it's the minimum uh, minimum uh, table there and as you can see there uh, the defender will take a loss on 30 or less attacker on 33 or more and 31 or 32 both will uh, will take uh, a step loss uh, so we just uh, now roll on that and we actually get a 20 um, yep, so that's actually a defender loss. Uh, so interestingly enough, um, the, uh, the double infused it is actually do clear the beach, which uh, I suspect is uh, practically unique in this instance. Um, but there we go. Um, so uh, let me sort that out. That seems to be the norm this turn as I'm uh, learning the system. Uh, actually I had that slightly wrong. The 
uh, normally because this is a zero step unit it wouldn't count but as a defender you do count uh, the fire value um, of an MG unit so the actual defense is a 1.25 not 0.25 uh, so let's uh, just run that calculation again and uh, what we got on the result okay I've adjusted that and that actually changes the table completely um, from the 0.25.25 to the 0.25 attacker to 1.25 defender uh, that's uh, that chart there in the middle so uh, yeah on a 0 8 or more percentile dice the attacker loses a step which uh, it actually does so I was quite premature in the uh, in uh, the victory on V Beach, uh, the uh, attackers are actually wiped out. Uh, note in an assault, uh, you can keep going for multiple rounds uh, until one side is either eliminated or retreats. Uh, of course, this now finishes because uh, there is no, no more attackers. So, looking now at W Beach, so. Uh, yeah, we have um, we don't have the Northern Felt Gatling guns now, so we are actually on the quarter. Uh, we have uh, three steps here. The machine gun doesn't count, um, so three steps, but they are halved. So that's one point five um, on their combat. Uh, we have the same shifts as we did on B Beach, uh, plus four and plus one. Uh, so um, looking that up, we get. Uh, we get the uh, 0.75 to 0 0.25 column, um, 0.75 for that, so it's uh, uh, an attacker loss uh, greater than 60, a defender loss on up to 63, so let's roll that. And we get a 46. So uh, that does result in the defender taking a loss. So W Beach uh, is actually taken. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can actually take the trench there and remove the assault marker. Uh, so the allies have landed in one place. Let's. Um, uh, yeah, that's good to see uh, for the game. Uh, we want everything wiped out on the first turn. Uh, now over X Beach, which is uh, a much more sorry tale. Um, we have this salt here where you have one step uh, versus uh, one and a quarter. Remember, we count the Nordfelt guns. Uh, so uh, one and a quarter uh, and one. Uh, but we do not have as uh, much of. And modify it's only plus three for the defense because it's a shallow trench remember so um, so an attack of one and a defender of 1.25 um, is uh, on a certain column and shifting up for the attacker modifier and then shifting to three the defender gets us on the uh, 0.25 attacker to one uh, defender, uh, that's uh, 0.25. Uh, that column there. So it needs a ten on uh, attacker needs a seven or more. Uh, sorry, the defender needs a seven or more. Attacker needs nine or less. So not a lot of chance. But let's see what you roll. So we've got a 48, which is the result of an attacker loss only. Uh, so. The uh, unit is removed, the salt marker disappears, and uh, we'll uh, get back to... Oh, hold on. I forgot the confused again, didn't I? Um, right, let me check that again. Yeah, that's the 0.5 attacker to... Sorry, 0.25 attacker to 0.5 defender, uh, which is a uh, attacker only loss on 21 or more, so it doesn't actually make a difference. Uh, the confused doesn't doesn't change anything, uh, so we can uh, put these units back onto X Beach, and uh, yeah, 
uh, that attack didn't go well either. So really we've only had a success on W Beach, uh, as you can see, uh, it's well established now. But V Beach and X Beach, uh, the attacker have been wiped out on uh, this wave. So after this it's on to the second wave. Now uh, I know this video has probably gone off far too long um, to hold people's attention. So what I do is I might leave it there and then I'll do a separate video for uh, the wave two. Um, so anyway, uh, made a load of mistakes there. Hopefully I fixed them, but uh, I'm sure uh, something else has uh, escaped my attention uh, from uh, uh, quite a complex game. Still, um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, uh, wave two on turn two uh, next time. I'll see you then.